So we are here at the Blender Institute where development on Eevee keeps happening. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Grant and I'm the host of Remington Graphics and if you didn't notice, my last video about Eevee absolutely exploded. It got more than 100,000 views in a very short period of time, so I'd like to say thank you to all of you who helped contribute to that. I decided I wanted to make this video because I found out a lot of new and important information about Eevee and because I made a few errors in the last one. So I'd like to clarify those and share a little bit more information about Eevee with you guys. I actually got in touch with Delai, who is one of the developers who is working on Eevee, and he gave me a lot of really useful information that I'm sure you guys will love. In addition to this video, I'd also highly recommend you go check out the live stream that the Blender developers did. It's on their YouTube channel. There will be a card in the upper right hand corner of the screen. It's just over an hour long, but it's totally worth the watch. In my last video, there was a lot of confusion about what Eevee could actually be used for, considering there is such a wide range of applications. When I asked Delai about this, he said it was originally meant to be a replacement for Blender internal. However, as it developed, it gained more diversity and became more of an alternative viewport for cycles. He believes that Eevee will be especially useful for animators and layout artists, and he gave me a really good example that I think really demonstrates some of the potential Eevee has. So consider you're trying to capture a reflection of a character in a mirror. Typically, with any of the other cycles preview modes, whether that's solid, textured, wireframe, or material mode, none of those actually show reflections. So if you're trying to show the reflection of a character in a mirror, you have to render it every single time or switch into rendered mode. If you use Eevee instead, you can easily place your character in real time and even preview the animation. So it works a lot better. A lot of people in the comments on my last video also seemed very excited that it might be implemented into Blender's game engine. And while I wish I could confirm that it's being implemented, it's still kind of up in the air. Delai said they're still discussing feasibility with the Blender game engine team, and we'll just have to wait to see in the future. As stated earlier in this video, Cycles and Eevee go hand in hand, so that means there must be some sort of bridge between the two. However, at the current moment, they use two completely separate shader outputs, and it's kind of confusing to be honest. So I asked Delai about this as well, and he said they were working on unifying all the shaders from Eevee with Cycle. So he said almost for sure that the metallic node will completely disappear, and possibly the specular one as well, as the principled shader and Eevee develop. Now these next few things are relatively small, however I thought I'd include them just because I had some confusion about them in the previous video and also it's just a little bit of new information. So the depth of field does indeed work, you have to be in camera view and you have to have your f-stop in the camera setting set very low. I tried experimenting with it on my own like 10 times after I made the video but I, I finally got it to work and I was like oh geez I'm an idiot. But motion blur is completely supported as well, all you have to do to use it is make sure that your camera is animated and that you are in camera view. The type of motion blur currently supported by Eevee is solely based off of transformation, so if you have something like an armature bending a mesh, it's not going to have any motion blur. It's just translations, rotations, and scaling. Additionally, I was a little bit concerned about the ability to change render settings from within Eevee, because I previously wasn't able to do that without switching into cycles. But fortunately, between the time that I contacted Delay and I'm making this video, this feature has been added, so there's not much to worry about with it anymore. Another question I asked Delay was whether there were any upcoming features that they were working on that are really exciting, and he did give me a few, some of which have already been implemented. These include fog, screen space reflection, bloom color, and much more. Ever since I released my last video about Eevee, I've been receiving a lot of requests and inquiries about why Eevee and Blender 2.8 won't run on people's computers, and it's important to understand that Blender 2.8 and the Eevee project are still very much in development. They're very unstable, that's why they say do not save or do not work with any really important projects with it, You just it's only for testing purposes at the current moment. If you guys really want to try out Eevee and you're having trouble running it, for example if it crashes or if it's very very laggy, um, I'd strongly recommend waiting a little bit and then trying a new build. The Blender Foundation releases a new build very often, maybe wait a week and by then there will be for sure another build um, that has definitely added some sort of compatibility check or some sort of bug fix that might solve your problem. I am 100% confident that the Blender development team is doing everything they can to fix these little issues, but until they do, all you can really do is wait. So that about sums it up for all of the new information I have about Eevee. 
I'd like to say thank you to Delai for answering my giant list of questions, as well as all of the other developers working on the 2.8 project. I don't know if any of the developers will actually end up watching this video, however if they do, I want to make sure that they know what they are doing is so important to a lot of people around the world and we are all very thankful. In addition to saying thank you to the developers, I'd also like to say thank you to my patrons for supporting my channel and keeping me going. You guys are the bomb, and I couldn't do it without you. Anyway, that about sums it up for this video. Thank you all for watching, I hope you learned something new, and be sure to stay tuned until next time. I'll see you guys later. Adios.